Hey folks, welcome back to Retirement Roadmap with Master Plan Retirement Consultants. My name is Evan. With me as always, Retirement Planner Mark Fricks. Mark, how are you today? I am great. More importantly, Evan, how are you? Um, I never ask you how you're doing. You know, I am just, right now I feel like I'm jumping from task to task, so I'm in go <laughs> mode. Um, but if I were to check in with myself right now, I think I'm doing pretty well. Good, good. Yeah. Yes, I understand the task. I mean, we have so many things going on with our clients and, and uh, new clients and, and new prospects. And, and then they got the show we got to do yeah. every week. It's a, busy, it's a busy week every week, but I love it. I mean, I love being busy. I love checking tasks off the calendar. Yeah. Gives you kind of a feeling of a completion. But more importantly, just be, being able to help clients. I mean, I come in every morning and I'll have several emails with, with client needs, you know, and, and so not only do we have new plans coming in, but we have, hey, we need a distribution or, hey, I need to update my will or I need to sit down and talk about some changes in our life or whatever. It's always something new and something we can help folks with. And that's just a good feeling. We've always got a lot of stuff, even just in the retirement sphere itself in retirement planning, there are so many different aspects to what we do as holistic retirement planners. We really try to uh, be comprehensive with the full retirement picture. So there's always new and different things going on. Okay. And then again, like you said, you add in some of the outside tasks like the radio show, things like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not boring, that's for sure. <laughs> not at all. We, again, the day flies by, and before I know it, it's dinner time, and <laughs> <laughs> time, time to go home and maybe get on the exercise bike or something like that. Time but to put the hungry man in the microwave and turn on the football <laughs> game. And <laughs> that's right. That's right. So anyway, a good show today? Yeah, I hope so. Um, in, in light of the fall season, it is... Um, early to mid-October right now, depending on when this airs. So we've got a bit of a spooky topic, um, and that <laughs> is what's scarier, death or retirement? Ooh. Actually pulled some of these numbers I'm about to read out from a USA Today article. Uh, what do working Americans fear more than death? Retirement. So, wow. so there's Or the, public speaking. Or public speaking, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to read off a couple of stats to you, Mark, and uh, see what you think of them. So 61% of working Americans are more fearful of retirement than they are of dying. Well, well uh, di dying is a solution to retirement. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a solution. It's a certain solution. Uh, not a preferred certain. one, perhaps, but it's right. a solution. Uh, here's, a, here's another one, and maybe this will is a little telling on that first fact there, 20% of Americans who are 50 and older have no retirement savings. Oh, wow. 20, uh, 20%? 20 percent? 20 percent of Americans People over 50 or wow, older. Wow, that's not su surprising, but not surprising. But that's that's sad, I guess, more than anything. It's it's tough. I mean, we know the struggle with just the discipline of putting things away. That's that's one thing. But we know also how many Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and yeah. how sometimes you just don't have that to put away. So Well, and, and I recall when, you know, we, our family was raising young kids and then teenagers and then college, and you're always trying to make ends meet and you've got to really be disciplined to pay yourself first and and you know, say okay starting next year because this bill might go away and then if, so you know of course another bill comes mm -hmm. up and it's just it is tough I understand that and we see it and we hear the stories and but you, you really just have to find a way to pay yourself first maybe even a part-time job for a while or something yeah. but that's that's kind of a Speaking of scary, that's yeah. kind of a scary stat there. Well, and then taking off of that first one, 61% are worried that they won't have enough money for retirement. Mm -hmm. And we get that all the time. Really what we get more than anything is just more of a cluelessness. Like there's no one really has a base of what kind of amount of money they need to retirement. They just kind of come to us with their stuff and say, this is what I have. Mm -hmm. What can I do? What do I have? You know, they, a lot of people just don't really have a foothold or foundation for perspective on retirement. They really don't. And, and, and you know, that's why we run the numbers and, and let's see where you're at and are you on track or not? And what will it take to get you on track? Uh, I hate these articles that come out and say, uh, everybody needs a million dollars to retire. Yeah. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's like saying everybody needs to be on blood pressure medicine that's or right. something like that. So, you know, make sure, again, we'll be talking later about the complimentary consultation that we offer. It is a chance, though, to look at your numbers and see really where are you at, not where is the general population. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. I actually, one of my topic ideas for a future episode is you need less than you think to retire, generally. Mm, I like that. Um, and it, well, it, especially it, if you if you do the things we do and make it more effective. Right, exactly. And that million dollar number is exactly right. You know, people, that's, the, you see that article headline because millions is a sexy number, a sexy, you know, phrase. 
but um, yeah, it's true. It, it's just uh, it's just clickbait mostly. You know, it's the same thing as when you see uh, you know if you're age sixty, you need to be this much in stocks and this much in bonds. Yeah. Again, just another ridiculous way to try to sell a magazine or sell a newsletter or whatever, and 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 so don't get caught up in that. Don't again. It's like you know taking care of yourself medically by googling stuff. It, it, it needs to be about you. And so um, these stats yeah. are great, by the way. Uh, people also fear retirement because they're worried about losing their identity and worried about developing expensive, expensive health care problems. So losing their identity, I guess that's related to, I was, I, I've had two clients this week uh, we have that have come in that are like, okay, the date's set. And it's like within two or three months. And we've been kind of working toward it. But it's, I love having conversations with them. It's like, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, and they're, I'm, they're like, well, we're, we're scared, we're apprehensive, we're excited, we're, you know, all these different emotions. Uh, but we hear a lot about people from an identity standpoint because so many people's identity is built into their job. Yeah. And, and so that, you know, what's, what's the first thing I ask somebody when I meet them typically is, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it's, it's, part of who we are, especially if you've been doing it a long time. And so I can see that. I can see losing, you know, not, not only that, but the, the being uh, friends, you know, kind of the uh, community of your work, uh, working toward a goal, things like that as well. So, yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's right on point. I think culturally, too, we so much of our identity is naturally wrapped up into what we do. So mm -hmm. the, one of the first things we, we ask people when we meet them for the first time, hey, what do you do? You know, nice to meet you. Um, but it's funny, losing your identity. But we also have some clients recently that are starting to reignite their, where they find their identity a little bit. Um, some folks that we've had as clients for a while, but they've had a really crazy few years. So we're just now getting back in touch and trying to get things rolling with them. Um, and they've never really opened up until more recently about some dreams about opening up their own uh middle central american uh boat service charter service for fishing <laughs> or actually no scuba diving actually is what right, it was because they're mm -hmm. both um extremely passionate about that they've both been certified and, and they're like what would it be like if, if that was know, our job we could retire and <laughs> yeah. have a boat out in central america and so yeah. being able to um move from one stage and reinvent back, themselves exactly exactly mm -hmm. what's that bible verse old men will dream dreams again like you know mm -hmm. um so it's really interesting to um to kind of see what, once you start opening up that conversation in retirement, and you start to hear more hopes, dreams, and okay, if I were to really imagine big, what would I be doing, you know, so. And then the, the flip side of that too, is uh, folks that love what they do, and they're, they're like, I don't ever want to retire because I love what I do, but maybe on my own terms. So they reinvent themselves and really do the same thing, but now, Maybe they work for themselves doing it, or maybe mm -hmm. they only work three days a week. I've, I've got somebody uh, that is, um, um, again, uh, you know who I'm talking about, that really enjoys what he does, very successful, but his wife's about 15 years younger, and they want to travel, things like this. I said, well, work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then you got mm -hmm. a four-day weekend every week, you know, or something like that. And, and then you kind of begin easing out of it, but you're still doing what you love. So, again, it's, it's not just about quitting, stopping. We don't do that anymore very often. Now it's about what are you going to do? And we spend a lot of time discussing it with our clients, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's a couple of more. Actually, I want to meet this, too, from what I, uh, I just mentioned, uh, fear of developing expensive health care problems. Um, so I'm not sure where that comes from, but it's interesting when we see people retire, it seems that sometimes things do start deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Now I know we're aging. If you're 60 or 65 and you're retiring and I'm in that age range and, and, you know, there's always little things that are cropping up, but I wonder if it's because maybe because of retirement, would it be because of maybe the unhealthiness of not knowing what to do with yourself or making a routine for yourself mm. making sure you set something up i think is vital for so many people in retirement especially if you are used to the nine to five or you've got purpose and it's really purpose driven it is really. goal like, driven purpose driven absolutely and if you don't have that then it's so much easier to fall into non-patterns bad habits exactly bad habits sleeping late like that. i mean that's okay occasionally but i mean watching tv all day long um 
drinking more. I mean, maybe sure. that could be something. Uh, well, all of a sudden, you got time on your hands. What do you do with your time? Mental health crisis, too. You know, if you start to get depressed because you're not as active, you're not seeing as many people socially at work, your coworkers, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing can tend to follow another. We saw what happened in the pandemic when people were shut off from each other. Um, yep. Yeah, substance abuse went out the window. So that's certainly something that sounds a little dark, but I think no. truly that's something um, that you have to really plan for yourself as as much as you have to plan finance, budget, income, things like that. You really do need to consider the social side of your life and making sure that you're mentally um, healthy, uh, physically healthy. Keep those keep your health patterns um, mm. rolling as well. Yeah. I think it's probably also more dangerous if you're single, like if you've lost your spouse, divorced your spouse. You know, you know, if you're married, you've got somebody to do stuff with. You kind of have common goals. We have a client we picked up in the last year or so that he had lost his wife. And that's when he came to us because she had handled all the finances. And he's having, he's struggling to find things to do. And he's picked mm-hmm. up some hobbies. But, I mean, he's really trying to replace purpose and, and that you know, the community of his spouse. And, yeah. and so that's tough. I mean, that, that that's bad timing. That's... That's sad, but it's, it's, it's reality, and, and you know, we, we talk to him and try to, you know, give him ideas and things like that, but, uh, and he's making progress, yeah. and that's a good part, but yeah. I, I am concerned about clients like that uh, health-wise and mentally as well as physically. Yeah, and, you know, every, even if it's not a, um, there's a, not a tragedy that might be prompting your retirement or something like that, I think it's still really helpful to try to be honest with yourself and analyze the kind of person you are. Um, okay, when my wife is away from the weekend, how active am I? Or am I just <laughs> am I sleeping in? Am I, you know, what, what's actually going on here? Um, sometimes a full break into retirement is not the best step. Right. Sometimes you pull back some of your work hours. Maybe you go part time or just take on contracting work with your company mm-hmm. or something in a similar field, and you take it incrementally because not only is that going to help financially if you've got some some of that income still rolling in. Mentally, it's going to help you start to uh, move into the next phase slowly and not feel like it's a, all of a sudden overwhelming change into one phase of life to another. Well, we're, we're also so much younger when we retire. And I don't mean necessarily age, just age, but also I can remember my grandfather retiring. He worked at the mill for 30, 40 years, and he was 65 when he, when he retired, and he was old. Mm. I mean, I, even looking back at pictures, he was old. And, uh, you know, I look at people my age, and which is about close to his age, and we look so much differently. We, you know, better health care. I don't know what all the other reasons are for that, but we're not, we're, we're younger as a, and we're living longer. Yeah. So now instead of five or 10 years in retirement, it could be 20 or 30. So again, another good reason, you know, people want to retire earlier and earlier. You know, we've got federal workers we work with that uh, they're able to retire as early as 56, 57. Mm-hmm. They got a long retirement head, oh, yeah. so a lot of them are finding new things to do and, and reinventing themselves as well. So it, it certainly is, and I know we're talking a lot about this today, but this is what we do with our clients. Yeah. We talk about this kind of stuff because it is just as important as the financial side. So it has changed. It's not a grandfather's retirement anymore. So, and you know, what's really neat is uh, if you visit the website, masterplanretire.com, We've got a lot of guides on there that talk yeah. about not only, um, you know, these are things you need to accomplish before you retire, but it can also get into some of the conversations we're having as well. But getting back to the financial, I think the guides are great. Masterplanretire.com, also a great place to schedule a time to sit down and maybe have this kind of chat with us, right? Uh, maybe it's not just financial, but it's about what are you going to be doing with your life in retirement, things that, of that nature. And then to run those reports that we run, are so revealing um, numbers wise about how's your money looking? What happens if taxes go up? What happens if you do lose a spouse? What happens if you have a long-term care need? Uh, all, all these different areas we look at uh, to illuminate the, the, the pitfalls, the uh, potholes, things like that, that can really trip us up in retirement. And so I hope you take advantage of that. If you're listening today or, or on a podcast or on the YouTube channel, on the radio, wherever you may be listening, uh, is to check out masterplanretire.com, schedule that time, but also bookmark it for future because it's always, we're always adding classes and, and webinars and resources for you as well. Uh, or do it the old fashioned way. 770-980-9262. So I uh, hope to hear from you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, masterplanretire.com. So back to the health care concerns in retirement. 
you know, we're seeing more people consider because healthcare is getting more expensive. We're seeing mm. um, when they can start drawing Medicare as as a potential point of retirement. It is becoming more and more centered around healthcare for some people. Um, okay, so I can't draw Medicare till 65, so maybe I'm working uh, less a little bit until then or whatever. Maybe uh, if I can stay on my spouse's health care, um, that's one, one, uh, one potential consideration. But then you also mentioned something uh, earlier, too, that I think is important. We are living longer. Um, we want to make sure that as much as we can, as much as what is in our control, we maintain our health so that the majority of those years that we are living, um, we have our, uh, we're aware of ourselves. We're, we, we're not reliant on, um, on other people to, for our, our ADLs, right? Activities of daily living, things like that, as best as we can. Uh, because one of the downsides to our medical advances is that it can keep you alive for longer, even though you might not be fully yeah. present or um, having a great quality of life. Yeah, that's why we, we see so many uh, new assisted living centers pop up, um, nursing homes, memory care units, is um, because of the fact that we are living so much longer, they're able to keep us alive longer. I mean, used to, you made a, had a major heart attack, you were gone. Now, if you get to the hospital in time, within a few days, you're back out, and, and within a few weeks and months, yeah. you're back to how you were before. And so, so many advances, and that's going to exponentially increase. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully, um, God willing, we'll find some answers to Alzheimer's, things of that nature, so that at least that, which is such a sad disease, we've all experienced it. Uh, I think everybody here in this office has had a loved one experience it. Mm -hmm. um, it it's just, you know, it's devastating and, and, and sad, but uh, so many other health issues as well because we are living longer and, and then it gets more expensive. Again, the long-term care cost, things of that nature. So, you know, it's, it's with every good comes some negative, you know, for sure. And that's kind of the title of the show, you know, the, the scariness of what's ahead. But by having a plan, we take a lot of that scariness out. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to have a retirement roadmap that, that maps out what happens if this occurs, if that occurs. It's so important to have these what ifs, um, these strategic um, turning points if something happens. Uh, to be prepared, and that takes a lot of that stress, and that's what a lot of our clients tell us and say, well, having a plan takes the stress off of my retirement, gives me the peace of mind so I can enjoy my retirement and not worry mm -hmm. about, oh, you know, what if this happens, what if that happens, things like that, and so it's just, it's just a powerful thing. We've also noticed more people doing preventative care before they retire, and they're still on their employee plan uh, to help preserve more of their nest. A nest egg in retirement, mm -hmm. start to knock out more of those before you retire and really um, backload, it wouldn't be front load, backload the, the last <laughs> few right. working years right. uh, while you have uh, your em employer insurance there as well. So there again, there are so many different strategies and approaches and also everyone's situation is different. Um, here's a couple more for you, Mark. Uh, most Americans anticipate needing between $100,000 and $1 million saved for retirement. Okay, pretty general Can I numbers. Can talk about that one? Yeah. Um, but most have between $10,000 and $500,000 saved. Yeah. What Can age read is that, that again? What age was that? Did it give an age or just uh, that's, No, you know what? That one, second one doesn't, but I anticipate mm -hmm. it'd be middle age plus you yeah. know, for it, in the retirement uh, planning phase when you start to consider that. Most Americans anticipate needing between $100,000 and a million dollars saved for retirement, but most have between ten dollars and $500,000 saved. Well, and that's, I think, the power of having a plan. I hate to keep coming back to that, but it's so important. But we also, by having that plan, we take every segment of their retirement, whether it be growth, whether it be income creation, whether it be uh, lowering taxes in retirement, all of those work together to make their money more efficient. Yeah. And so that, you know, I've had people come in and maybe they had a half a million, but we were able to stretch it out much further by doing some of those things. And so I think... Um, you know, I, I don't know where they go get those numbers from. It sounds like they just interview people and what do you think? And, uh, you know, I don't I don't know where that thinking comes from. Is it from articles or whatever? But again, it's each individual is different. But also whatever you've got, start now. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you got five more years to work, let's see how we can e more efficiently save some money and grow some money. If you've got one year to work, let's see what else we need to do. Maybe we do work part-time the first five years to, to 
not have to touch that money for a while. There's so many different options. Uh, we've seen so many people. Or you'd be surprised. Maybe you don't have to get that part-time job. Maybe you choose to do that for your own uh, activity. We don't know till we look at the numbers. Right. We really don't. And so uh, that, that's why I s uh, still think it's so important. And I think it's pe a lot of people don't realize, you know, they look at their dads or, or granddads or grandmoms or whatever, and they didn't have a retirement planner. Why do I need a retirement planner? Mm. Well, the world has changed drastically, yeah. as we've discussed already. And so, again, if you want to optimize, just like, you know, 50 years ago, I'm sure people didn't go to the doctor every six months for a checkup when they were 50 or older or whatever. They were more like stay at home and take medicine and do the best you can. We've just become more proactive because we've found that it works better. Same thing with your finances. Yeah, and, and the market's a perfect reflection of what you said too. You know, we have that, we have a great handout that we use for illustrations with clients called Not Your Father's Stock Market. Um, 1980 to 2000, the general trend is up. There might be one or two shifts in trends, but um, do you remember the return, the average return? 17.75% annual average return for those 20 years. Can you believe that? <laughs> Knowing, you know, being in the industry, not, you know, mm. at that point I was a child, but mm. what we know now and the reality we're living in now is so much different. What is it now? 6.97? 6. 6.5-ish over the last 20, since the year 2000. Right. Um, and the biggest drop from 1980 to 99 was just under 10. Mm. The biggest drop over the last 23, 24 years was 38%, I believe. And if you combine an 18-month period, it was 56%. Yeah. So it's much more volatile. There's a lot of reasons why. Maybe one day we'll get into that more in a different uh, show. But it, the world has changed. It's not going back. We're not mm -hmm. going back to the nice steady, you know, and not that the stock market's always been steady, but uh, it's been much less volatile than it has been over the last 20, 25 years. And so you have to treat it differently. Um, so that's a great point. Yeah, the game has changed. And that's the thing, you know, so many people look at, these individual topics or, or facts of like, oh, well, this many people don't consider long-term care important or this many people are prepared for a long-term care strategy or this many people are not concerned with taxes and retirement or think that they'll be in a, you know, every individual bubble, th this, this percentage of Americans have emergency savings built up to this, all this kind of stuff. It's overwhelming. There's so many different things to consider that it, you kind of get the, uh, what is the term? Um, decision paralysis or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, there's a, a paralysis by analysis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. yeah, again, and so that's why we want to look at every piece, but it, it can be so confusing. There's so much bombardment of information, a lot of it not good, and almost all of it not applicable to your particular situation, uh, whether it be f uh, social media, whether it be, again, these things that pop up on our news feed or whatever. Uh, most of the time, somebody's trying to sell you something anyway, so it's not really about you, it's about them. Um, but it, it, it is so many pieces coming together. And this is, this is the hard part, Evan, as you know. Just when we have an answer on something, it changes. Right. Whether, whether because of the market, whether because of laws, whether because of whatever. And, and so, I mean, we've had several changes between the SECURE Act 1, SECURE Act 2, uh, some things in between that are happening. Right now we've got uh, new politicians coming into Washington, whoever that may be, over here in the next month or two. They're going to have new ideas. They're going to make other changes. I'm reading about Social Security, ways to change it. And so it's just so much going on. Uh, even I have trouble keeping up with it, but I can't mm -hmm. imagine, I don't think anybody that's not in the in industry can keep up with it. So again, just uh, let us help you out. Let us give you some guidance. Uh, we keep up on this stuff. Uh, we've got people, uh, I've got a lot of experience. I try to keep up with it. We've got younger advisors here that definitely can probably do a better job because they have younger minds. I don't know, but, but we're always trying to keep up with everything. So just, you know, again, visit the website. We, we, we got to wrap this up today. We're running out of time, but masterplanretire.com. I would love to see you face to face, have a chat. But until we see each other again, Remember, plan well and prosper. Take care. This was Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks of Master Plan Retirement Consultants. To schedule a complimentary consultation, go to masterplanretire.com or call 770-980-9262. Thanks for listening and remember, 
plan well and prosper. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, a registered investment advisor in the state of Georgia. Mark Fricks and Master Plan Retirement Consultants are not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency.